for the gate to open to get in the show. My plan was to be there early, but traffic was slow. Anyway, I reached the tent on time, but I had to join a line. If you see big rock partner waiting to enjoy the soca line. Yeah. See the ladies, partner, tight dress and posing. All them vendors selling food and drinks everywhere, music playing. Somewhere near a big doorway, you at New AFC promised more jobs and a good life. Instead, we lost 30,000 jobs. Taxes went up. People are less safe and cost of living skyrocketed. Now, after four years of neglect and corruption, the at New AFC gang are coming with more empty promises. Only cause they need you now. We are smart. Fool me once, shame on you. This time, we will not be fooled by your sneaky fake news at New Promises. We vote in PPPC to get Guyana working again. All over the country, where we go, from one end of the country to the other, it's the same old story. Thousands and thousands of people are coming out now, in fact tens of thousands. People are fed up with the PNC. Dr. Jagan said that prior to 1992 elections, people are fed up with the PNC. And I can tell you that as I travel around our country, I was in, in Caribbean on Wednesday and Esquibo Coast on Thursday and Leguan on Friday. As we travel around the nation, people are fed up, as Dr. Jagan said, with the PNC. You know, when you listen to uh, our caretaker president, Mr. Granger and our caretaker prime minister uh, speak out there uh, to people. You know, it's almost what I call uh, a laugh. You know, when you buy a pack of cards, you get 54 cards and you really could only use 52. What do you do with the other two? The two jokers, you throw them out. And that's what these gentlemen are, are going around our country once again uh, telling people, you know, if they were elected again, they will finally do the good life for them in the next five years. What the heck have you been doing, Mr. Caretaker President, for the last four years? You have become the undertaker. Mr. Granger, you are a caretaker, but you've become the undertaker. You have ruined our economy. And I will describe some of the terrible things that you have allowed to be managed in our nation. Uh, over the last four years that have really ruined our our economy. The caretaker to an undertaker, Mr. Granger, you can't hide behind the, the promises of good life anymore. We all know you have a good life. From the house you used to live in five, four and a half years ago to the house you live in today, to the old car you used to drive four and a half years ago, to the eight cars that you're allowed to, to, to or 18 cars that protects you. Um, you don't shake any, any people's hand unless it's in a church. Mr. Granger, this caretaker mode and the undertaker role that you've taken on definitely is hurting our people. You know, and people in Lego want, you know, suddenly getting $18,000 on their water bill. Want to know where that would come from? We know many things have gone up over the last four years that it's our people are suffering. Mr. Granger, you are a PNC man, and Dr. Jagan said it in 1992, and we are saying it today, people are fed up with the PNC, fed up with the policies. You have really gone to the extreme to take our economy down to the lowest level that we would want to see it. Now, today we had a very good day. The Justice thing made the decision that house house registration got to stop. Stop it immediately in the next couple of days, wind down, collect the forms, whatever. And so if you didn't register, don't worry, you don't need to register anymore. That was a good decision today. I think what ne next needs to happen is basically, you know, go a lengthy claim and objection period. Let's get a, everybody a chance to validate their name is on the list. Those new registrants would have a chance to get verified that they are supposed to be on the list and then we're going to elections. 
So Claudette Singh, you know, every step of the way, if you think of it, what the what happened since December, that the PV put PVP put together the, the no confidence motion. Dr. Scotland, the Speaker of the House, validated the motion. The Chief Justice in January validated the motion. The appeal court, we know what happened there. Chief Justice again validated the the the, the no confidence motion and give orders to stop the illegal activity. And Justice Claudette Singh today made that decision, stop the house house registration. It's not a process that can happen right now in our nation. Those are the people that are patriots of, of our nation. Those are the people that should be getting that big award, the top national award our country can give out, not some Ghana president that no one ever know, ever saw, done nothing for Guyana, comes in our country and gets a medal. These are the people that have stood up for the rights of our people, stood up for the Constitution, and upholding what needs to happen. And our caretaker, undertaker, president, caretaker, president, and prime minister, the two jokers in the group, can come up with a plan to follow the rule of law and stop hurting our people. You know, the PNC goal, if you listen to their commissioners over the last eight months, their goal was to deregister us from the list. Mr. Granger wanted to tamper with our names on that list. That was the whole purpose of the House House registration. They wanted to tamper with the list. They wanted to take our names off the list. And Justice Claudette Singh, the Chief Justice, the Caribbean Court, put a stop to it. You cannot take our names off the list. The right of us for the Constitution says we once we are registered, we are registered until we are dead. Great news for all of us. Now, Justice Claudette Singh, and the team's got to get ready. No game's got to be played going forward. Get a date for election. The government has been illegal since March 21st, so we know the caretaker on the taker, Mr. Granger, cannot do anything outside the law. He told his, his uh, general counsel last weekend, the PNC headquarters at Congress Place, that he's still government. He's functioning and enjoying the good life. Well, Mr. Granger, as a caretaker and undertaker of our economy, we've got a lot of rebuilding to do over the next few years. Building it together is what we and the, our people have to do. The PVP uh, presidential candidate has outlined some significant programs that will have to be revived, new programs that would have to be implemented, and ultimately all those 200 plus taxes that you have put on us will be reversed. We'll put money right back in our pockets. You know, the commitment where the joint forces would get their bonuses right away. And if we're going to have a November or October election, whatever, those, those joint services, you've got a lot to look forward to because you will get your bonuses by the end of the year. So that's a commitment. You know, the, the school grant, we know school starts next week. That will be re-implemented right away. So maybe in the next few months or weeks, whatever that uh, date is for election, you will get that school grant back, that money back in. The 200 plus taxes, we know we will reverse. That's a commitment. So Mr. Granger, you try to tamper with the list. You have failed again. The rule of law is more powerful than a caretaker president. We've got a lot to do with our economy. You know, you have buried it as the undertaker. We've got now to excavate, dig up, and rebuild. Honestly, if you see the numbers from the mid-year report, you wouldn't have to even question what I said. It is all the sectors are suffering. and We know the unemployment rate is up. All of that today, and when you listen to Justice Claudette saying, we've got hope, hope for a nation, that the fact that we will have election, the date is gonna have to come soon. Mr. Granger, you know, I know you've spent money rebuilding some other house, but 
that fancy house that you live in right now that you painted all green I hope you didn't paint the house green inside you know one minister rented my house uh, actually I rented it to Parliament that put the minister in my house and that minister painted my green house green inside took five coats of paint to get that green off mr. Granger I hope the outside is green I hope the inside is not green but that's your green uh, paint economy and I saw you mention something about turning Bartica green. I hope it's not painting the town green. That's all we know. So Mr. Granger, you have not done your work as the president. You have not done your work as the caretaker president. You have damaged your economy as the undertaker president. And it's time for us to move forward. You know, when you look at what is happening around us, when you look at the agreements that Mr. Granger has dictated Mr. Trotman and others to sign. Mr. Granger has dictated. You want, you would want to know if that man is a patriot. Well, I'm a nationalist. I believe in Guyanese first. I believe we have a right to enjoy our wealth first. Mr. Granger signing a deal with Tolo Oil at 1% that we are even going to pay that is a traitor to our economy. It's a traitor to our people. It is nonsensical. You are, have to be really that joker in that box of cards because who would sign an agreement like that taking the rights of our Guyanese people away from us? We know Exxon may get a break because they were the frontier. They opened the market for us and maybe we validate a little bit and give them a little break. But, you know, agreements have to be looked at again because as we go forward, that can happen. You know, so 1% after we found oil in 2015, you sign that agreement, Mr. Granger, in 2016 and give away our country's wealth to a foreign company without allowing any of our local people to enjoy it first. And if you look around, Mr. Granger, what you have done we have seen the trinidadians company coming in here i've met with some of them some of them have gotten land and many concessions from you you know when the trinidadians were doing well and their economy is not doing well right now when they were doing well they did not want any one of us guyanese going over there and take any work but you mr granger allowing the trinidadians to come into our country giving them our concessions and refuse to put a local content legislation on online for us when our people deserve the right to our wealth mr granger i see you wear the flag on your lapel our flag calls for us to take care of our people first stop giving away our country our wealth to foreigners i would rather see you open and welcome policies of our Guyanese brothers and sisters living overseas. Bring them back home. Offer them the concessions. Instead, your Attorney General, you know, filed cases about our dual citizenship. That is unpatriotic. Our Guyanese and brothers and sisters around the world, million of us plus, deserve peace of Guyana. Whether they left their shores, many that have left their shores, send money back to take care of their family back here many have come back and started businesses yet you allow other foreigners to come into our country and give away our wealth one percent of royalty you know i found a document today mr granger from your hero mr burnham and the man was definitely smarter than you because in that document it said mr burnham put together our oil policy he said if we have over 125,000 barrels a day of oil in guyana the oil company must pay us 25 percent 25 percent he had estimated from 25 to 125,000 barrels a day and he wanted 25 percent royalty mr granger 
We've got seven or 50,000 barrels a day and it's growing. And you asking for 1% and that is being paid by us. All the, the expenses that Exxon is, is incurring right now, even when they borrow money, when these companies borrow money, to bring the ships in, to bring the wells in, and the drills, and they have to pay the finance charge to the bank. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, we are paying it, not those oil companies. And Mr. Granger looks at you and says, he promises you the good life. The man is neither a patriot, he's neither a nationalist, he doesn't know how to take care of our own people, he knows how to take care of himself and a few ministers around him that have the good life. People that can't afford their water bill, people that can't afford the electric bill, people that can't afford the taxes, people that can't afford to redo their rice fields because you're not spending enough money on the bug infestation. The sugar workers that are suffering because of, of, of no work, you close an industry out of spite. I hope you take that flag off of your lapel because you are no Patriot or nation, you're no nationalist. You're giving away your land. Then look at your immigration policy. You've got thousands, tens of thousands of people coming in our country that you can't even account for. And then your minister, caretaker minister of finance basically said, hey, if they find jobs and you want to hire them at cheaper rate, forget the Guyanese population. They need to bring their wages down in order to match those coming in to our country. A poor immigration policy. Mr. Granger, you are an undertaker. You are ruining our economy. From your deals with the oil, your deals with the Trinidadians, your deals with the immigration, you are definitely an undertaker because most of us are not going to see that well. And, you know, one of the only hope, when I, when I go through the numbers in our mid-year report, and I look across our economy as I travel around and speak with just, you know, Uncle Joe and Auntie Suki the other day and some of the people, you know, Fat Boy and a lot of people around, around the country as they call each other their nicknames. It is a sad case. You know, one guy came in the office today and he brought, he's building a house in town, a two bedroom house, you know, maybe 20 by 30. And he had to disconnect the, the toilet from the sewer system. So GDI told him today that in order for him to hook back his new house that will be finished in the next couple of months to the sewer system, they gave him an estimate of $1.2 million for them to buy pipes to excavate, to hook it up back to the sewer system. What ridiculous thing this government is doing to our people. Where would a gentleman that makes sixty, eighty thousand dollars trying to build a house finally for his family, his two his wife, himself and three kids, and have to spend one point two million to hook up his toilet to the sewer system? Mr. Van West Charles, I hope you look into the matter. I saw the documents today myself. I can vouch for the documents. That is what is happening to our nation. The undertaker president continues to hurt our people. When people suffer, we all suffer. You know, when you hear the cries and you see, you know, the people going to the store and buy a hundred dollar water oil in a plastic bag, I've seen that for myself. That tells you where our economy is. So no big numbers, no big oil contracts. You know, that $18 million sign on bonus, Mr. Granger, that you dictated our country to take. You know, if you look at the salary of Exxon CEO, you probably would be shocked that 18 million is probably just chicken change. You know, go in and Google now what the Exxon CEO makes every year, plus bonuses. Tell old CEO, plus bonuses. Mr. Grange, you took a measly $18 million for people. You know, when you estimate the loss for these bad deals that you have signed, Mr. Granger, you have dictated people to sign on your behalf. We're up to, in today's numbers, 122 
million US dollars of loss. A hundred, no, billion, 122 billion dollars over the next decade or so that we have, will lose because of your poor skills, your incompetence. Why didn't you hire, you know, lawyers that understand the oil and gas industry? You hired some dummies to fight your election battle, and you know what? They all lost. All lost. And you continue to want to delay the process and tamper with our list. All the lawyers, Mr. Granger, that you hired, they lost all the cases, except for the appeal court one that, you know, was really a laugh today. The lawyers that you hired, if you'd hire good lawyers and negotiate the contracts, look at the investment from the oil companies, look at the, the basin where they're drilling, project what the outcome from oil will be, even at the lowest barrel of oil, and understand how long it will take that company to recover their costs with a, with a projection, with some financial numbers. And many of us could have sit down with your, your incompetent Jordan and under, teach him how to run the numbers and show the projection. So when you sit at the table with Tolo Oil or any future oil company, you would know exactly what to ask for. Mr. Burnham knew that if you if he got 125,000 barrels of oil per day, he wanted 25% royalty. We know you he is your idol, but somehow you missed that. Somehow you missed that. So we the people, we the people suffer. Mr. Granger, you continue to not have the local content policy in place. I saw at the private sector meeting the other day how many people criticize your administration for a failed local policy. Now we have to trade our barrels of oil ourselves on the open market. You have incompetence at the level. You don't even have an expert, oil expert, sitting running the Department of Energy. No slam to Mr. Dr. Bino, he's a great guy. But, you know, he has no oil experience to figure out how to look at how do we trade those barrels of oil for our 2% royalty from Exxon, much as the deals that you have signed. So you study those numbers, $122 billion, Mr. Granger, we will lose because of your bad deals. So any agreement that you have signed after the no confidence vote, we know we will have to we look at all of those. So all those Trinidadians coming into our country, I warn you, the fact is, if you're taking concessions this last year, eight months from this government, and you're taking away our Guyanese right for those concessions, our Guyanese wealth, I would lobby the PPP administration to ensure that they take those concessions away from you. And if any Guyanese, and I know many of our Guyanese brothers and sisters who have put in to support the oil and gas industry that have been sitting on that list, have invested money and they cannot get the rights and the concessions. I know individuals that have done that. So if you're an overseas Guyanese, you want to come back, I would say, welcome. Let, all, let all, all of us get together and build this country together. We need you. We need all your expertise back. But for all those others that come and think that they can rape us because we got an incompetent undertaker, caretaker president that doesn't understand the economics of running a nation that is coming in and giving him, I don't know what, for him to give away our nation, people, it's our taxpayers' dollars. It's our money. It's our future wealth for our young people. When Mr. Granger travels around the country now in, in his caretaker mode, and Mr. Nagamutu, they're running away. I mean, Mr. Granger, the only places he goes now is to school children and to a church. Mr. Granger is afraid to face the nation. Afraid to face the nation. So the only time you see his picture shows up 
Look at it. Is at the PNC headquarters last Saturday, at a church last Sunday, and to some school children where he talks about education. That is where he is right now. He's afraid to watch us in the eye. He's afraid to walk the streets. 18 plus cars, sirens blazing. Walk the streets, Mr. Granger. Let's go to leg one tomorrow. Let's ask those people what has happened to their community. Go to Wakenham. When you go to Barbies, Mr. Nagamutu went to Barbies. He didn't even get to Barbies. He had to run away because nobody was there waiting for him. Mr. Ramjitan, you know, said, blame us for crime. If you got money in your pocket, you are blamed for, for anybody robbing you. That is what? I hope a 52 pack of cards, 54 pack of cards had more than two jokers. So we probably got 10 packs of cards because you add all those jokers, the content that they're giving us right now, we can go home to our family and, and tell them where our next money is coming from to pay our electric bill. You know, I went through that myself. They came two months in a row, estimated my electric bill. And I go and says, why are you doing that? I saw the guy read my bill. And then wants to put a big number on it. You know, it's ridiculous. You know, if you're not paying attention to what is happening around you, you all will suffer. And it cuts across. It's not just the vulnerable. It's everyone Mr. Granger is trying to squeeze in order to get more money. The economy has gone down. We know we're not getting foreign income from sugar because no sugar is selling. We know rice is gone down, so we're not getting money enough from rice. We know forestry has gone down. We're not getting money from forestry. And you name all the diamonds and all, all the other industries, the agriculture sector, a stacked. So when you don't have money coming in, you know it as a, as a, a household person. If you don't have money coming in, how are you going to spend? So what Mr. Granger is doing is taxing us, raising all the taxes. Look at your G GWI bill two months ago to what it is today. Look at your electric bill. You know, all these things are coming at us at a very, very pa fast pace. The Undertaker president seems to want to bury our economy to the ground, in the ground, below the surface before he gets out of office. And Justice Clark is saying, I hope all the data is in place for you to recommend that date the soon as possible because our people are fed up with the PNC, their antics, their failed policies of the past, their failed policies of the present, their unpatriotic uh, management of our economy, giving away our Guyanese wealth to foreigners when we haven't had a chance to be able to benefit from it. This is not about politics. This is about reality. Reality. We have to ensure that we, the people of Guyana, of all races, of all color, of all religious belief, benefit from our oil and gas and our, on our minerals and our forestry, Mr. Granger. It's not for you to do that. It's not for your 50 people in your cabinet to benefit it's for our people to benefit so when you tell them about the good life in the next five years you are not giving them the good life you couldn't even give them the good life in the last four years they had a good life mr granger prior to 2015 people had a good life they took a chance the pnc could never win an election on their own we know that they took a chance because of the coalition something new and they are sorry. They will tell you straight up, Mr. Granger, they're sorry they took a chance because of this coalition that you presented. The PNC end of the day are failed policies. Is the PNC commissioners, it's not any coalition commissioner on GCOM, it's the PNC commissioners that wanted to tamper with our list, wanted to deregister us, wanted to house to house registration to put people on that shouldn't be on there. The law, karma, came back. The law is the law. We are on the list. You can't take us off. We're going to vote and we're going to vote you out, Mr. Granger. 
So start packing your bags, get ready for your afterlife, you know, get your health together, spend some time with your grandkids. And I hope the caretaker and undertaker mode that you have um, done over the last four years don't come back to haunt you. But let's get on people with us paying attention now. What, what happens next? We're going to have elections. No matter how long they try to delay it anymore, we're going to have elections. And when we have elections, you're going to vote. And when you get a chance to vote and you listen to the PVP administration manifesto and you see the PVP presidential candidate, young, energetic, educated, aggressive, knowledgeable presidential candidate, Mr. Ali, when you look at the plans, when you see the programs being presented, when you look at the reviving of the current industries, when you look at how we plan to put 50,000 jobs back in the market, how do we plan to curve all the unemployment, how do we plan to revive sugar and rice and forestry, how do we plan to look at the new productive sectors, how do we plan to look at our energy, integrated energy plan that will bring our electricity costs and our manufacturing up. Those are beautiful and, and, and financial programs, well thought out, well designed, well calculated, projections in place. And we look at the, the oil and gas industry and we look at what that can do to enable some of the industries to flourish again and not give away our future, Mr. Granger. Don't let's give away our future. Stop it, stop it. Stop being the undertaker. Keep the caretaker role for now until you are voted out. Stop being the undertaker. Stop ruining our economy. And stop giving away our wealth to foreigners. Get a, you know, fix the immigration the best as you can. We will definitely come in with a better immigration policy. You should never have 10,000 plus people in your country and don't know where they're at. Mr. Granger, Time for you to go. Your good life that you promise, you're unpatriotic, you're unpatriotic. You don't even believe in our national nationalism. If you did, you would not have given away our wealth to foreigners. Thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. As, as, as Dr. Jagan said in 1992, people are fed up with the PNC. We knew that. They came and hid under the, the APNU umbrella, but at the end of the day, they run the country just like they did before. So if you're a PNC supporter, I ask you, you, you did give them a chance. You cannot say you did not give the PNC another chance. You did. They failed you. They failed all of us. This election is coming very soon. We can build our country together. We will do it with national pride, with a sense of duty, and a commitment to all Guyanese that we first must benefit from any developmental transformation in our country. People want to come in and be part of it and support us. They're welcome, but they're not here to take it from us. So I'm asking you to pay very close attention to the next few weeks. Make sure that when we have a claim and objection, your name is on the list. Your right to vote is a constitutional right. And I welcome all of us working together, building together to take our nation forward. And Ms. Ali and the PPP administration of the future will ensure and commit the team and our people to, to ensure that all of us, regardless of a race or color, texture or skin or religious beliefs or party affiliation, will get a chance to benefit from our nation's wealth. God bless you. All over the country, where we go, from one end of the country to the other, it's the same old story. Thousands and thousands of people are coming out now, in fact tens of thousands. People are fed up with the PNC.